microscope. Before we begin, we'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen are multiple application widgets you can use. All the widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your council space. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner of the slide area. Today's presentation consists of slides and a screen share. For an optimal viewing experience, please ensure that you have checked system requirements along with bandwidth considerations. Webinars are bandwidth intensive, so closing any unnecessary browser tabs will help conserve your bandwidth. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the help link located via the question mark widget at the bottom left of your screen, where you will find details about system requirements and frequently asked questions. If you experience a blank screen during the webcast, please try refreshing your browser or pressing F5. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A widget. We will try to answer these during the webcast, but if a more complete answer is needed or if we run out of time, we will reach out directly. Also, notice the Learn More widget. Here, we've added a, a few links to a strobe fact sheet, a recently published blog that correlates with today's presentation, as well as a copy of today's slide presentation. In addition, we have also included a link to the next webcast in our Did You Know series on February 22nd, ISPW and Jenkins, a DevOps integration dream, which will highlight the integration between CompuWare's ISPW, CompuWare Topaz Workbench, and Jenkins, enabling automated deployments through DevOps continuous integration. We would also like to encourage everyone to fill out our survey before the end of today's presentation, and by submitting your response, you will automatically be entered to win a $50 American Express gift card. There's going to be three lucky winners from today's respondents, so please participate. We are extremely pleased to have as our speakers today CompuWare Solution Consultant Dennis Knack and Account Consultant Brad Kaler. We also have Product Manager John Dannenberg assisting with questions, so please make sure to submit your questions via the Q&A widget to take advantage of that. With that, now I'd like to welcome and hand things over to Brad. Brad? Thank you. All right, I'm going to start with the agenda for today. Uh, item one, we're going to identify performance opportunities within Performance Tracker. Item two, track issues through integration with Atlas and JIRA issue tracking system. Item three, create and manage customized help with user help. Uh, item four, obtain SQL information using SQL analysis on demand. Item five, compare two ice world profiles. Item six, create folders to store and organize profiles. Item seven, specify columns displayed in MyScrobe. And item eight, leverage filters, notes, and tags. And with that, Dennis, I'll let you take over. Thank you, Brad. I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. Um, what we'd like to speak on today is some of the features within iStrobe that you might be less familiar with. I'd like to start with talking about Performance Tracker. To navigate to Performance Tracker, I can either click on its icon within the iStrobe display, or I can utilize the menu slash hamburger up at the top part of the iStrobe display. I'm going to use the menu slash hamburger icon to navigate to Performance Tracker. Performance Tracker allows you to identify opportunities for performance improvements, as well as estimate the cost of performance and the potential cost savings. An opportunity is a specific instance of poor performance that when corrected yields an improvement in the performance of the job. Opportunities are tracked by profile. Profiles along with the opportunities identified for each profile are collected by projects. A project specifies the cost set to be used to calculate both the initial cost and the potential savings. So what I'd like to do now is originally just set up the cost set. So I'm going to click on the cost set icon. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a new cost set. I'm going to call it mainframe underscore costs. 
I am going to leave it apply to all the systems and subsystems, and I'm going to change the non-prime time CPU cost to $250 and click OK. With that said, I've added the cost set that I'll be able to utilize when I go in and create a project. Now, to get back to performance tracker, I don't typically use the breadcrumbs at the top of the screen. So I'm going to click back to performance tracker. And I'm now going to create a project to accumulate my opportunities in. So I'm again going to add a new project. And just for my correlation, I'm going to name it the same as I named my cost set. The cost set I'm going to change to be the one I just set up. And since I'm not a very good typist, I'm going to leave the description in the comments blank and just click OK. And now I have my cost set added. So what I do now is I'm going to go back into my strobe and add a profile to this project. And then I'm going to add an opportunity out of that profile. So again, to get back, I'm just going to use the hamburger icon at the top, and I'm going to go into the profile display, which is Maestro. Something we'll be discussing a little later, but I'm going to utilize now just to trim the list of profiles I have, is the filter. And I'm just going to use the text filter, and I'm going to narrow the profiles down to those profiles that start with COBOL. And I'm going to pick on the COBOL before profile throughout this complete presentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that profile. And again, I can right click to add it to a project. Or I can use the menu slash hamburger up at the right hand side of the page to have a drop down list of those things that I'm able to do. And down at the bottom of the selection list, performance tracker and I will add a project, add this profile to a project. And the project I'm going to add it to is mainframe cost, which we just set up. And it's a batch profile. And the number of times it executes is 52. It's a weekly job. So I'm going to basically set that information and add the profile to the project. Okay, once I've done that, I'm going to open the profile. And I'm actually going to navigate from the strobe advisor display down into the detail in the program CPU usage display. I am going to click on the arrows just to maximize my text space and eliminate the graph. Expand out the module that I was executing in, which will position me at the line of code that I had originally clicked on. Now, it looks like the original line of code is actually only using about 3 hundredths of a percent of CPU time, whereas time spent in the actual COBOL runtime module, IGZCIN1, was pretty much 99%, 98% of the CPU time. So I'm going to click on that as my opportunity is to evaluate why this COBOL runtime routine is being consuming so much CPU. So once I click on that, I'm going to click on the dollar sign at the top to add this opportunity to performance tracker. And I'm going to add it to the project we've just set up. I'm just going to call it high CPU for the opportunity. And it is a CPU opportunity. It is in the code. And there are various statuses. I'm going to use the new status, but if I click on the drop down, there are various statuses that I can utilize to track this opportunity as it goes through the various phases of being corrected or identified. Oh. Yes. Uh, the estimated savings is going to be, I'm going to be op optimistic and say I'm going to save 50% of the CPU time by correcting this fix. So now at this point, I can click OK, or if I'd like to see some details about this opportunity, 
I can see the details. I could see its original annual cost based on the numbers we specified in the cost sets, which are dollar figures. So when I changed that to 250, it meant for non-prime time, a CPU hour was worth $250 is what was being costed for it. I can also see the potential savings in both CPU and runtime. So I'm going to close that out. I'm going to actually click on OK. And the opportunity has been added to the project. Now if I jump back off to Project Tracker, or Performance Tracker, I can now go under Projects. I will see that mainframe cost is set up and I have a plus sign next to it. So I can actually go in and see that COBOL before was added to it. Its CPU consumption for a single execution was 6,000 seconds. It's executed 52, 52 times a year. And its annual costs are basically $23,000. If I click down below, this will tell me about the opportunity that I added, which we described as high CPU time, and I estimated my savings at 50%. So next I'd like to go in, and I'd like to talk about issue tracking. So issue tracking allows the integration of the CompuWare products with Atlassian's JIRA issue tracking system. Uh, they can be leveraged from the Avendade web viewer or from ISTRO to log issues directly into JIRA from the Submit Fix Request page. This integration really enables the recreation and debugging information to be stored in a JIRA, which can then be used to track the issue and assign it to an application development team for resolution. So the first thing I need to do for issue tracking is to actually set up my interface with Atlassian's JIRA. To do that, I need to jump off to CompuWare Enterprise Services in the administrative function. So I'm going to use again my hamburger icon and jump off to administration. I am going to jump into issue tracking. And because I'm not an exceptional typist, I've actually already keyed in some of the values to set this up. So instead of adding it, I'm just going to edit the one that I previously set up which is a mainframe cost JIRA, so I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to go in and edit to show you what you need to do to set up the integration between ISTRO and JIRA. The first thing that we're going to do is we need to identify or name our JIRA interface. We tell it it's going to be a JIRA interface. We identify the JIRA server. Um, I've given it my username, and I'm going to give it my password so I can continue on. So I've identified my location and my credentials to get into Jira. As I click Next, it's going to take me to where I needed to specify my project information. And I only have access to open Jiras for application development project, so I have no additional pull downs. But the issue types that I can open are bug, new feature, story, or task. And in this case, it's going to be for a bug. As I click Next, it's going to ask me to map the fields from the fixed request to fields in JIRA. And what I've done is I'm using the fixed request to get the summary as well as the description. I'm using some of the default values within JIRA itself as well as some customized values. So once I've set up that mapping, I just click Finish. And my setup or integration into JIRA is now ready for use. I'm going to jump back into Maestro. and maintain my filter for COBOL. So I'm going to pick on COBOL before again. And this time I'm going to open the profile by clicking on the profile name. I'm now going to submit a fixed request. Now, on the various pages where you can do fixed requests, there'll be a little icon of a bug 
over at the right hand side of the screen and if you hover over it says fixed request so all I really need to do is to click on that bug and it's going to open the submit fix request page I'm going to say I CPU and I'll just repeat that I CPU and at this point I can either click OK and the Jira will be open or if I'd like to see some of the information that's going to be passed into that Jira I can click on details and it's basically going to give the link to the iStro profile for which this Jira was created as well as some information about um, the job and the step that were run that were part of this profile. So once I've entered that information, if I click OK, it will go out, use my interface, and open up a JIRA. And as you can see, it notified me that a JIRA was opened. And if I click on the link, it will actually take me into that JIRA. And it will show me that you know, I am the person who opened that. Um, no comments yet on this issue, but it was a high CPU time, and the attachment contains the information on that high CPU time, and again, it was a bug. So once I've done that, uh, I can now follow through with the normal JIRA tracking of either tracking the issue or going in and assigning it to someone to work. Next, what I'd like to talk about is user help. And I'm just going to use the same module I currently have up, which is the COBOL before and inspect bad. You notice on the strobe advisor that you know 98% of the time was spent on line 74 in program inspect bad and section inspect bad. Well, you notice it's not underlined, so there's no help available on this. If I have information on this module that I'd like to share with other members of the team. I can actually go in and provide user provided help which allows me to create and customize help for iStrobe for those things that might be site specific or unique to your individual site. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to again use the menu or hamburger icon and I'm going to jump off to user help. And I'm going to add user help for the inspect bad module. So the status is in progress, I'm, and there's two statuses in progress and publish. In progress means I'm still developing the help. I'm going to publish mine immediately. And it's help for a module as opposed to compiler options or general help. So this is for a particular module, and the module name is INSPBAD1. So my title, I'm just going to make it the same as the module name. I'm going to put in some text. One, so I've entered some text that I want to share with other people. And then I'm actually just going to say I am the source of this information. So if anyone has questions, they know whom to contact. So once I've entered that user help, I'm going to click OK. And because I changed it to publish, is going to publish this immediately so all right so I now have my user help I'm just going to click the browser back button and I'm back at my strobe advisor and you notice because I now created user help that within strobe advisor where it's talking about the module I can see that it's the module INSP BAD1 is now underlined and it's changed colors into blue and that really means there's help available for that module. So now if I do nothing more than click on that underlined module, much like the other help, it's going to take me to the help topics. I can see I have help on module inspect bad. And I'm going to click on it and there's the comments I wanted to share with the rest of the team. All right, I'm going to close out the help window. And the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about SQL analysis on demand. 
And what SQL analysis on demand allows is it allows us to dynamically obtain DB2 explain and catalog statistics. It, it also allows us, if we're making changes to a SQL statement, to go out and make those changes and, and sort of model it and grab the new explain data or catalog, catalog statistics associated with that updated SQL statement. So I'm going to, again, use the icons up at the top. I'm going to go into Maestro, which is where all the profiles are displayed. And I'm going to remove the COBOL filter. And I'm actually put some DB2 programs out into a folder that I have. So I'm going to narrow, trim the display just to those folders where my information is stored. And I put it out there under my username. So I'm going to look at information just saved in a folder called Dennis Knapp. And these are the profiles I put out in that particular folder. So I'm going to go to one of my DB2 profiles which is no SQLAF. I am going to click on it to open that, which now puts me into Strobe Advisor. Um, the statement that consumed the most CPU consumption happened to be this particular fetch statement. And I'm going to go into the details by going to the DB2 profile report for this particular SQL statement in Strobe Advisor. And that's going to take me into the details positioned at the statement I had clicked on. And SQL analysis information can be gathered when you create a profile, but if for some reason you forgot to do that or the explained data wasn't hap didn't happen to be included in your profile, you can request this on demand. So I'm going to click Request SQL Analysis on Demand. I am going to authenticate with the mainframe. And now I'm going to go out and I'm going to gather the explained data and the catalog statistics associated with this particular SQL statement. Now, when that information is obtained, it will either obtain the information from existing static SQL that's been incorporated by doing explain yes at the time you bound. And if that information is not available within a static explain, static plan, it will actually go out and do a dynamic explain on that SQL statement. So I'm just going to go and submit the statement for analysis. And it's going to bring me back my DB2 information. So it's going to bring back, you know, this is the SQL statement I explained. It's going to bring back the explain data. It's going to bring back the catalog statistics. Now I'm just going to close that out, and I'm going to do one additional thing. I'm actually going to relaunch that as if I were making a change to that SQL statement. And in this case, I'm going to make it worse instead of better, because I'm going to go in and remove the WHERE clause. And then I'm going to say to test that SQL statement. And it's actually going to go out and do the explain on that altered SQL statement. Next thing I'd like to do is compare two profiles. So I'm going to close out my SQL analysis. I'm actually going to go back to Maestro. Close out my folder and again do a filter on COBOL. And I'm going to Compare two profiles. So what iStrobe does is it gives you the ability to compare two profiles down to the line of code. So in order to do the comparison, I'm going to hold the control key, and I'm going to click on the two profiles that I wanted to compare. Once I do that, again, I can either right-click and do the compare, or I can go up to the hamburger slash menu and ask it to compare the two profiles. First thing it's going to do is it's going to throw me into the measurement session data report, which is a summary of, of what occurred for each of the jobs. And I can actually see from this that my runtime went from 180 minutes down to four seconds. I might be satisfied right at this point to say 
Um, I made a significant improvement. Um, this is basically a horizontal view. If I wanted to see this side by side, I could also click on the window icon at the top of the screen to split it vertically. And then I can navigate to any of the reports that I want to to get to the detail, including the strobe advisor report. So it's very useful that screens stay in sync. As I scroll down, it will keep the screens in sync. As I navigate to different pages, it will synchronize the screens. All right, next thing I'd like to talk about is folder creation. So I'm going to go back to my strobe again. And what folders do is it allows you to separate your profiles into a folder so that you only need to view those profiles that you've put in a particular folder. So it gives us a way to store and organize the profiles. By default, if you change nothing else, all the profiles by default are going to go into the iStrobe folder. Um, this can be changed at the time that you're creating a profile. So I'm just again going to click on the hamburger at the right hand side of the screen. I'm going to have it create a folder. And I'm going to just name the folder my TSO user ID. And I am now going to change the filter a little bit and I'm going to change it to HCC to pull up some different ones. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy a profile, actually move the profile into my new folder, newly created folder. So I'm going to move the profile, and this time I use the right click as opposed to the, the pull down menu. And I'm going to put that in my newly created folder. So I'm now moving profiles into the folder. And what you can do is you can notice on the screen that the folder name has changed. And now if I go to folders and Question marks are allowed in folder names. I'm just going to use the full dot down and go to my folder I just created. And you can notice now that it only presented me with one profile I moved into it. The other thing you can do while we're on this particular display is you can actually alter the columns that are shown on the My Strobe display. So you can tailor the columns to visually how you'd like to see them, and you can add and delete some of those that are there by default. So it really allows you to customize the Maestro display to what you wanted to take a peek at. So again, I'm just going to use the menu, and I am going to go down, and I'm going to view columns. And these are the columns that can be shown on the Maestro display. And I'm just going to include system name, onto this display that wasn't there, and click OK. And it now added the system name on my Maestro display. And I'd kind of like to see the, the system name right in front of the LPAR name. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to drag it over in front of LPAR so I can move fields around on my display to keep the important stuff on the initial display right in front of me. Um, something I've done before as we're going through this was to utilize filters. And what filters do is it really gives me a way to trim the profiles being displayed in the Maestro display. For, for most of the filters, wild cards for a single character is a question mark. And if you want a wild card for multiple characters, it's an asterisk. But there are multiple different types of filters that I can use. If, I click on the More filter, I can actually do filtering based on profile name, job name, step name, etc. So if I was to click on job name, I can now basically go in and I can do a filter. And I want to do those at, say, HCC, an asterisk for a wild card, um, just three. And it brings up the one profile, trim down to the one profile that I brought up, so I can utilize that filter. Um, I can also do it by the owner ID, the person who created the profile, um, by, by the LPAR. You already saw me do it by the 
folder. And the one I typically use is the filter, which basically does a, a scan for the characters that I keyed in to allow it to bring up just those profiles like I did for COBOL. Now, there's one additional one if I go to the measurement tab, which shows the measurements. Is there's the extra, which allows me to filter on the status. So if I didn't want to see all the completed profiles that didn't have a profile created for it, I could actually come in and I just want to see those that are either running or waiting to run. So I can click on the status and choose active and queued for the status. All right, last but not least, we're going to talk a little bit about notes and filters. And I'm going to go back to the profile display. And I'm again going to filter on COBOL. And as I go over, you notice that COBOL after does not have any notes. So I'm basically going to put a note in for COBOL after. So I'm going to click on the profile. And I could either right click or go to the menu again. And I'm going to edit notes. And I'm just going to say this is a note and click OK. And now if I scroll over on the note field, you will notice that it now has an icon denoting that notes are there. So I'm just going to go in and view that note, make sure I keep everything in correctly. So I'm going to view notes. So notes have a real limit of about 4,000 characters. So if you wanted to share information regarding this profile, notes would be a good place to do that. The other thing that's pretty similar is doing tags. The benefit of doing tags is that the actual tags that you enter are shown on the iStrobe display under the tags field. So what I typically do is I use the tags to go in and see what type of profile I have. So I'm going to actually go in and create tags. And I'm going to say this is add a tag. I'm going to say it's COBOL and add it. And then I'm going to give it another new tag of its inspect and add it. And now as I scroll over on my profile, I can see that COBOL and SPEC are out there in the tags field. And now I can actually do a filter. And let me just do a filter on inspect. And it basically brings up the profiles that have the tag with just inspect in it. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one additional thing is that all of the information on iStrobe is available in help. So if I go to the question mark on the top of the screen, I click on help, go to help. It actually does some intelligent searching of, of the help. So I'm just going to do a search. And I'm going to do it on Maestro filters. And all the information on filters, it found 24 hits that mentioned this information. And if I just go to filter the list of profiles, it'll bring up help and it'll tell you what each of the icons that you can use for filter is. It also tells you about the use of the question mark and the, the asterisk. So help is very powerful within iStrobe. And within that, I'd like to turn it back over to Brad to, to wrap it up. Thank you, Dennis. All right, so for a recap, <clears throat> we demonstrated how to collect performance opportunities with Performance Tracker, track performance issues through integration with Atlas and Jira, create customized help, obtain SQL information dynamically with SQL analysis on demand, compare ISTRO profiles, create folders to store and organize profiles, tailor display columns in Maestro, limit profiles shown with filters, and add personal comments with notes and tags.
Great. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, um, Dennis, for showing us those hidden gems. Um, before we kick off to our Q&A, I just want to remind everybody that's um, still on the broadcast to take advantage of um, filling out the survey. It will help not only us, but it will definitely help you. We're offering three American Express gift cards. Um, uh, for those who participate in the survey. And with that, I'd like to kick it off um, to Q&A with the team. Thanks, Janet. Uh, let's see. First question we've got, uh, Dennis, what version of iStrobe are you running on uh, this demo? Um, for this demo, I'm, I'm running the most current version of iStrobe, which is 18.2. All right. Next question, is there a way to have real-time alerts? Example, there might be a DB2 query or an online transaction came to the system that causes high CPU. In this, can email alert be generated? Okay. Um, Autostroke has the capability of looking at the elapsed time of, of CICS transactions or the runtime of a batch job and generating an alert. So I'm not sure if that's what we'd like to see or not is the alert out of Autostroke. Right, thanks Dennis. Um, let's do one more question here. Uh, are the issue tracking settings specific to the individual user or shared by all users? It, 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 can, it, can, be, it can be set up either way. Um, in our environment, we we have it set up so that those the Jira is set up to notify people, and it's based on the individual um, that's actually performing the work. But you can also set it up to do an email to a group of individuals for for the Jira. All right, thanks, Dennis. Um, for any of the questions we didn't get answered, we will email you directly. Thanks again for attending today's spread, uh, webcast. As uh, Brad mentioned, for those um, questions that we didn't have time to get to, we definitely will re reach out directly to you. Um, we are here if you need to contact us. Thank you and enjoy your day.